And so what is sensory processing? Well, it is a neurological process during which sensory information from our body and environment is processed, integrated and organised. Now, to break that down a little bit, um, so by a neurological process, we mean something that's happening in our central nervous system and our, our brain, um, during which that sensory information from each of the eight senses is um, received, processed, integrated with information from the other senses. The brain then organises that information. And if there's no problems with sensory processing, then it's able to produce, we're able to produce an adaptive response to respond to whatever that sensory input was in our environment. Um, and that helps us keep ourselves safe and do all the things we want and need to do. Um, so it is essential really to, to everything that we want to do on a day-to-day -day basis, from eating, getting dressed, engaging in play, for you sitting here right now to be able to hear what I'm saying, um, to be able to watch the presentation on the screen, to be able to keep yourself sitting still um, and, and focused and to be able to concentrate and attend to, to this session. So it, it really is important for everything that, that we want or need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, it's also something that happens in all of us all, all of the time. So it is continuous in all of us. And we're often not consciously aware of every bit of sensory information that we're processing. Um, but our sensory systems begin to develop while baby is in the womb, so in the prenatal period. And we all as babies first make sense of the world using our senses. But we're not born with them fully integrated. So we're not born with them working together. And there's a rapid period during the first seven years of life, really, where our senses um, become fully integrated and begin to work together to help us to, to make sense of our environment and our bodies. For most children, sensory integration, and just to say as well, probably should have said it at the start of the slide, sensory processing and sensory integration ultimately mean the same thing. So they're two terms that are used interchangeably, I think, depending on where in the world you are um, and what type of background you've got. But ultimately, when I'm saying sensory processing or sensory integration, those two terms mean the same. So um, the development to sensory integration occurs through normal interactions with our environment and normal, typical childhood experiences. So things like play, engaging with caregivers, um, engaging in your environment, um, typical milestones or so opportunities to learn to roll, the tummy time, to sit, to crawl, to walk. This is how our sensory integration develops. But for some children, it's less well developed and they may experience sensory processing difficulties, which can impact on development. It's not always because there's a lack of opportunity. It's usually because there's something going wrong in that process um, of sensory processing. Now, I'm not going to go into any more detail, really, other than I had a little look at the um, a couple of um, recent papers and, and research articles and the prevalence of sensory processing differences. Um, is sort of one in six to one in 10 people. So it's it's really quite common. Um, and it's not just about having maybe a little quick or a sensory preference. It's more when sensory input um, or sensory processing is impacting on what we want or need to do. Um, and ultimately, sensory processing is a foundational skill for development and higher learning. 